Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Carbon and its Compounds. Let's continue with the rest of the concepts in this chapter. So for, we learned about the uh, functional groups and the saturated and unsaturated compounds that is series of alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. So now we are going to learn about homologous series. A series of compounds in which the same functional group substitutes a hydrogen in the hydrocarbon then it is called a homologous series. For example, if you see CH3OH, what is this? Methanol. Then C2H5. OH. What is it? Ethanol. C3H7OH. This is propanol. So like this the series goes on. Here all you can see the same functional group we substituted one hydrogen in the carbon chain. Okay. So all of these are coming under the same homologous series. The same way if I write simplest alkene group CH4, C2, H6, C3, H8, C4, H10. This is also another homologous series of alkene. If I write C2, H4, C3, H6, C4, H8, then it becomes series of alkenes. The same way C2, H2, C3, H4, C4, H6, this will make us the alkyne series or the triple bonds. Or we can uh, tell about carboxylic acids also, that is methanoic acid, CH3COOH, methanoic acid, or CH3. COOH, this is ethanoic acid, CH3, CH2, COOH, this is propanoic acid. So like this, so many acids also we can say, then this is called a carboxylic acid group. The same way we found aldehyde group, ketone group, propanone, butanone, pentanone, hexanone, all these. These are all forming the homologous series. If you see how are they different, suppose if you see in all these cases OH is common or the functional group is same here in both the cases but here you can see from here carbon is one increasing, here one more increasing, here also one one increase in carbon, here also carbon is increasing by one. So he can see here also one carbon, here two, here three. So we can see that carbon is increasing by one whereas hydrogen you can see three becomes five, seven increasing by two. Here 4, 6, 8, dead. 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6. Or here also 2, here 4, here 6. So we can say that there is a difference of CH2 between adjacent members of a homologous series. So you can get a question uh, how are adjacent series of uh, adjacent members of a homologous series differ? They differ by CH2 and also their molecular weight if you see uh, the atomic unit uh, mass unit of carbon is 12 amu and that of hydrogen is 1. So but 2 hydrogen are there 2 into 1. So they differ by 14, 14 atomic mass unit based on this difference in CH2. These two you have to remember homologous series differ by CH2 and by 14 AMU. We can say that functional group determines the characteristic properties of a homologous series. But when you see that the homologous series is increasing, that means in the lower members the physical property is degrading. When molecular mass is increasing, actually their melting and boiling points are also increasing so that there will be a gradation in the physical properties. The same way there will be gradation in their property in a, uh, to dissolve in a particular solvent also. But what about their chemical properties? The chemical property will remain the same because the same functional group is present in all of them. Now we will learn the chemical properties of hydrocarbons or carbon compounds in general. There are four chemical reactions that we have to study combustion, oxidation, addition and substitution. Okay, let's see one by one. What is combustion? Combustion means a burning. So usually burning happens in the presence of oxygen. When coal or carbon is burned, we get only carbon dioxide. But all the carbon compounds usually emit heat and light also. Allotropes of carbon means we learn three allotropes. Do you remember them? What are they? Diamond, Graphite and Buckminster Fullerene. So these three allotropes also contain only pure form of carbon. So if we burn what will you get? Carbon dioxide and heat and light. But if you burn hydrocarbons along with the carbon dioxide you will get water also. Here we can see the simplest alkane methane. Methane is a very good fuel right as a part of biogas. So methane when burns in oxygen what do we get? 
carbon dioxide, water and heat and light. So whenever hydrocarbons are burned, you have to write heat and light also in the products. Here is another uh, compound, hydrocarbon. Can you name this? Look at this. How many carbon? Two. So it starts with the earth, right? And single bond. So ethane. Then OH group means E should be removed into ol. So ethanol. So this is ethanol which is burning in presence of oxygen to become carbon dioxide, water and heat and light. So any hydrocarbon compounds you write, you are going to get the same on the right side. Only thing here, the number will keep changing. When you are balancing, the number of molecules produced will change, but the products are going to be the same. But we learned about two types of hydrocarbons, saturated and unsaturated. Are they burning the same way? No. There is a slight difference. If it is a saturated compound, they will burn with a clean flame without any smoke. Whereas unsaturated compounds, they burn with a sooty flame and the flame will be yellow flame. Uh, especially those who are uh, using the uh, ghee to burn the lamb and all, you know, there won't be any smoke produced. But if you use other oils like gingery oil or any saturated oil, you will fe feel that the soot is coming out of that. It is because that unsaturated compounds, they burn with a sooty flame. Now, is it only because of saturated or unsaturated, they are burning with a clean flame and a sooty flame? No, there is one more factor contributing to it, that is the presence of oxygen. In limited supply of oxygen only available means, even the saturated can burn with a sooty flame. Especially, we know that we are using kerosene stove or gas stove. You know, a gas burner has got some... Um, rings on it with the lots of holes. What are these holes for? These holes uh, ensure that enough oxygen supply is available while burning. But you know when we are cooking something spillage may occur. So once the milk is spilled or something is spilled, if you don't clean it over a period of time, these holes can get closed. During that time when you burn something in the gas, you can see that the uh, at the bottom of the vessel black coating will form. Usually uh, the gas flame is burning very clear flame with a clear flame there is no uh, black suit is forming but once it, the, there is blockage in the holes this will happen so that's an indication that it's time for us to clean the burner so that again the inlets are open we can even poke it with a needle or a toothpick to clear it so that again the oxygen supply will be enough so that it can burn other uh, fuels that we are using as a uh, as carbon compound we are using as fuels are coal and petroleum we know they are non renewable sources of energy that's why we are finding alternative sources these days they have been produced over millions of years but there's a slight difference in their formation coal is produced only by plants that is huge trees or huge ferns which existed long back and other plants they somehow got trapped inside the soil on the earth surface uh, there happened volcanic eruptions or earthquakes and so they were compressed under layers of soil so due to that pressure and uh, conditions they eventually over millions of years they turned into coal what about petrol petrol was formed by both plants as well as animals but lived in the sea coal was on the land petrol was on the sea in the sea also, due to various reasons, they died and they all got deposited under the uh, bed of the sea. Over a period of time, they got covered by silt and uh, they, uh, under the high pressure and uh, the conditions, they eventually turned into petroleum and gas. And the silt over it turned into rocks. So these are the two ways they were formed over millions of years. When we use coal or petroleum as a fuel, we know most of the vehicles we are running using petrol. But the problem here is the incomplete combustion of coal or petrol can lead to the formation of some emission of nitrogen or sulfur also. So sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide can lead to acid rain later. Second reaction of hydrocarbons is oxidation. So here we can see that any carbon compound simply on combustion they get oxidized. That's what we saw in the previous equation also. Oxidation means what addition of oxygen. During combustion carbon uh, added oxygen to it and became carbon dioxide right. But here the, we are discussing another property or another chemical reaction where if it is an alcohol okay functional group is OH. If it is oxidized or oxygen is added it will become acid. What is this alcohol? 
This is called a ethanol, right? So ethanol, if we add oxygen, it will become ethanoic acid. CH3 CO OH. So what is increasing? One here only O was the OH was here, then it becomes COOH, right? So here uh, for this to happen, we need some substances to provide oxygen. So they are alkaline KMNO4. KMNO4 is nothing but potassium permanganate. Or we can use acidified potassium dichromate that is K2Cr2O7. Both these cases we have to heat. Okay, is heat not hydrogen. Okay, so if you heat ethanol in presence of alkaline potassium permanganate or acidified potassium dichromate, this alcohol will turn into acid. This is called an ethanoic acid, this is ethanol. So here, uh, these two substances are actually providing oxygen for the alcohol to become acid. So the such substances are called a oxidizing agents. So substances which give oxygen for a reaction are called a oxidizing agents. So here we are learning examples of two oxidizing agents, acidified potassium dichromate and alkaline potassium permanganate. The next reaction we have to study is addition reaction. As the name indicates, something is being added. Here what is being added? Hydrogen is being added. So you can see this is an unsaturated compound. Why am I calling it an unsaturated one? Because it has double bonds. But if you add hydrogen to an unsaturated hydrocarbon, it will become saturated because one bond means share of electrons. One pair of electron is being shared. But if we can give hydrogen here, the electron can be shared with the hydrogen and as a result, a bond can be removed. So this one, we are if undergoing hydrogenation or addition reaction, what we get is C, single bond C, R will be there. But along with that, hydrogen will also be added. So once hydrogen is added, we are getting a single bond. But for this reaction to happen, certain catalysts are required. So the catalyst can be nickel or palladium. So here using nickel, we are uh, hydrogenating this. Usually this reaction is happening during hydrogenation of vegetable oils. You know vegetable oils are unsaturated. They have long chains of carbons. For, for example, some of them have up to 18 and 20 carbon, long carbon chains. So these uh, long chains of unsaturated carbon chains can be made into saturated. Then we can make the vegetable ghee or vanaspati. So hydrogenation of vegetable oil to get vanaspati. But usually we feel that saturated oil, saturated and unsaturated, easily we can distinguish by their existence. For example, if it is saturated during low temperature, means that uh, when the uh, temperature goes down during winter seasons, they solidify. Think of dalda, which is the panaspati or the uh, saturated form of a vegetable oil. Uh, or we can say about a ghee. Ghee is a uh, animal product, but still that is also uh, saturated. That's why it is a solidified at room temperature. Butter or uh, coconut oil is another example. During winter season, we know we have to uh, melt it to use, right? It is coming in solid form. Why all these are saturated? But unsaturated hydrocarbons, means like uh, oils, they never get solidified. For example, gingerly oil, sunflower oil, and all, how much ever the temperature goes down, they will not solidify. But usually we found that animal fats are also and are saturated but saturated fats are considered unhealthy. The last chemical reaction we are discussing is substitution reaction. So substitution reactions are happening uh, to saturated hydrocarbons. The saturated hydrocarbons usually are unreactive but in the presence of sunlight they bind with the uh, molecules like a chlorine to become uh, undergo substitution reaction. So this is a quite fast process. So chlorine will be replacing or substituting the hydrogen one after the other. So a type of atom or a group of atoms replacing uh, one hydrogen is called a substitution reaction. So here you can see methane with the four hydrogen. But if one hydrogen is replaced by chlorine, we get uh, CH3Cl. So one chlorine is added. But if two chlorine are added, then we will get CH2Cl2. Then one more added CHCl3. 
Then the last will be CCL for carbon tetrachloride. So step by step the hydrogen can be substituted by chlorine in this reaction. Hope you understood all these chemical properties and homologous series well. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.